members on. So we have Devin from the sales team over there, and we have Michael Lorkovich, our director of ticket sales, Anthony, our play-by-play -play -play broadcaster, PR, Lauren over there, director of uh, business operations. <laughs> We've got Brooke, our uh, creative services producer in here. Uh, Carrie Kaplan, obviously you guys know who Carrie is and Spears NASA. So thank you guys all for joining me on the call. Um, I guess what we'll do to start things off is we'll, we'll give the floor to Carrie. If you wanna to touch on a couple of topics and we'll, uh, we'll get things rolling. Yeah, it's a, it's a uh, so first of all, thanks for everybody this. I think we're all in a, uh, unusual time here. So I, first thing I'd say is I hope everybody's uh, healthy and safe and in a good spot. A couple people, uh, uh, I always look the people, some Lori and Tim and Spiro, so you have the, the nice backgrounds there. So I'm the people that have the, uh, are in nature, I, I feel are doing the best. But anyways, thank you all for joining uh, this. It's, uh, yeah, it's a really unusual time for, for all of us. But uh, you know, credit to our team in the office and Spiros and the hockey ops groups. We've been, you know, working, you know, where some other organizations maybe have scaled back or, or shut down, unfortunately. And we've, we've been full force and our team has been working really hard over the, over the summer to, uh, to be ready whenever we come back. So um, for those who haven't heard, there was a recent consistent with the NHL and OHL and a number of other leagues. We made an announcement that, uh, we won't be starting till December 4th, um, but we're optimistic, right? We're, we're in a unique spot where we're one of two Canadian teams. So I think the, the border, probably the biggest unknown for us is what's going to happen with the Canadian U S border, but that, that affects the NHL and AHL and all those leagues as well. NHL has got seven Canadian teams. So we've, we've only got two. So I think we'll, um, we're hoping that they're going to uh, be able to sort of in a, in a roundabout way have, um, help to expedite the whole situation there. So we're getting everything kind of ready, gearing up and ready to go. And I think today is really about the, the team and some of the exciting players that we've, uh, we've been able to sign. And uh, again, looking forward to your feedback. And for those who joined, I hope this, this, this may be the first of uh, a few of these in the new normal. So, so thanks for being here. And uh, I'll throw it back to Sam to uh, move forward with, uh, with the plan. Thanks, Carrie. All right. So speaking of uh, business as usual during uh, quarantine and everything that's going on with COVID-19, someone who's probably had some challenges with everything is uh, Spiros, our coach. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about what it's been like signing during COVID-19 and how that's been going and what you're looking forward to most? Yeah, firstly, thanks to everybody that's joined today. Uh, you know, obviously, as an organization, we really value our fans and our um, but it's been definitely challenging times, but there's been some silver linings as well. Uh, obviously, you know, focusing on health and making sure everyone's comfortable and happy has been important. Uh, but one unique thing that I've kind of discovered during this time, although we've been from afar and connecting virtually and through the phone, uh, I feel like I've been able to connect a lot more personally with a lot of our players, our staff, and, uh, you know, it just sometimes it takes a situation like this to just start asking more simple questions like how are you doing and how are you feeling and get to know people on a personal level. So while we're not connected personally, uh, it seems like we've been able to uh, speak a little bit more in depth of, uh, you know, of each other's lives and, and how we're, you know, we're coping with everything. In terms of signing, there's been some challenges. Uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of question marks when you talk to players and agents uh, and families, about what's going to happen. And there's a lot of questions that can't fully be answered, but with, the information that's given to us week to week that is shared through our management, through Kerry, to me and our coaching staff, and then on to our players, we're able to make uh, some, what we believe more, more sure decisions. Um, you know, it's been difficult with tracking the progress in Europe uh, with leagues out there that we compete with on a recruiting basis and all, also tracking what's happening with the national and American leagues since we're affiliated and connected with them. So, uh, but at the end of the day, Hockey players want to play hockey. Uh, they love the game. They love playing for our fans. Uh, they want to be part of the culture and program. So that's what our, our conversations are focused on uh, with optimism that our season's going to start and we're going to have a really great season for our fans and put a great product on the end. So while it's been challenging, um, there is a lot of optimism out there. And I think, uh, you know, we kind of miss it. So it might give us a little extra edge moving forward. Awesome. 
Uh, really excited to see what, what kind of team we put on the ice and how exciting it's going to be to market on, my, on behalf of me, market that team. Um, I guess what we'll do is we're going to get started. So we let you guys know that this was going to be kind of a player reveal for us, um, but it's not just going to be one. We're actually going to reveal three players that we're really excited about that are joining us this season. Um, and before we get to the very first one, we had a fan question from Mark Edson. I hope I'm saying that last name correctly. Um, if Mark's on this call, uh, if you'd like to ask the question yourself or I can read it, I'm just looking for Mark on the call. Looks like that Mark should be here. Oh, oh, there he is. Perfect. We'll see if Brooke can unmute him for us. There I am. Hey, Mark. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Nice to see you have a mask. Yeah, I'm in a hospital. That's why I'm waiting for an appointment. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Um, did you want to? Did you want to move forward with the question? Uh, yeah. Well, I guess this would question would be for players. You you don't, have, or it could be for your coach. That's what we were kind of thinking. It might be nice to let Spiros have one before we get right into all the guys. Okay. Well, I'd like to ask the coach. Um, uh, I'd like to ask the coach. Um, what road city does uh, do the players, or does he in? I like to go to uh, the most, and why does he like that particular city? And uh, if I might add, is there any road city that's not on the schedule that you would love to, to visit? Yeah, I think that's a really great question. Uh, you know, the unique thing about the ECHL is you get to see some really different places, uh, and you know, places that you probably wouldn't travel to if if you were going on vacation. So there's some really cool spots. I think. If I'm basing it on last year's uh, schedule, um, probably one of my favorite spots is, I actually I'm gonna say two, so I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I like Norfolk, uh, Virginia a lot, and I like uh, Orlando, Florida. And some people may say that's an easy answer because of the weather, but the food is outstanding. Uh, you know, in Orlando, they have really an electric crowd and the great game operations with some great graphics and great videos. Uh, so we really like that. Uh, Norfolk, uh, maybe because it was maybe our most successful trip, so maybe I'm a little bit biased to that one, but uh, really enjoyed being in Norfolk. It's beautiful scenery. You're on the water. The battleships are there. A lot of tourist attractions. And uh, there's this great burger joint that me and Anthony Fusco are probably downed about 25 burgers in a matter of four days. Uh, uh -oh. I forget what it's called. Jim Brown's or Jack Brown's burgers. It was, it was unbelievable. So those are my two favorite spots last year. Heading into this season, I mean, the schedule is a little bit up in the air right now, um, but there's places that I've never seen that I, I'd like to get to. Like, I've never been to Wheeling, West Virginia, and I know people are probably going to laugh about it, but I've, I've heard it's a unique spot and they have a nice arena. Uh, I've never been to Rapid City, and I know that is tentatively on our schedule this year, uh, so I'd like to get, get out there. So I'm excited to see new things and new places all the time, but uh, Norfolk and Orlando are probably the best last season in the 1920 season for me. Awesome. Thank you, Mark, so much for the question and best of luck over there with your appointment. Um, so we'll move along and we'll reveal our first player. And one of the ways that we wanted to do this okay. was let our, our staff members introduce them so that you guys can kind of guess along as they're, as they're kind of describing them just to make it a little more fun. Um, I also want to remind you guys that because uh, the players will be coming in and you didn't know who they were before. If you guys have any questions for these players, you can pop them into the chat. Um, it'll be on the right side or it'll be on the bottom of your screen. Um, we'll answer one question. We'll kind of choose it out of the queue for timing purposes, but we'll go ahead and start. Michael Lorkovich, our Director of Ticket Sales and Operations, he's going he's gonna to kick us off with his uh, introduction. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Uh, it's my honor to introduce our first player we have here today. Uh, so this player has steadily improved each year he's been with the Beast. Uh, he scored a career-high 17 goals last season, and he's also a steady net presence on the power play. I'm sure you guys have a few guesses who it may be. Um, I also like to think he has the second-best mustache in the organization. With that being said, I'd like to announce we have re-signed Jackson Leaf to the Brampton Beast. Am I in? He's in. <laughs> okay. Uh, really excited to uh, sign back with the Beast this year. Um, like Lorky said, um, I feel like we've been building a lot of momentum, not just myself, but as a team. Um, and I'm just excited to see uh, what we can accomplish this year. I think that's the most excited 
uh, thing that, that I have uh, in my mind. So appreciate it, Lurky. Well, Jackson, I have a question for you. Appreciate the I'm mustache not... comment, too. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Had to throw that in there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I have a question for you, Jackson. And while I'm asking if any fans have any questions for uh, for Jackson Lee, just throw them in the chat. We'll answer them after this one. But Jackson, what have you been up to this off season? I'm sure everybody wants to know. I know your dad, Ron, and you uh, run a successful program for, for young athletes and athletes who are aspiring to be pros. And have you been training with Ron? And how's that all been been going for you? Um, yeah, my dad uh, has his own uh training facility at our rink in town um which allows me the opportunity to work with a lot of kids while i'm home um and it also gives me the opportunity to get on the ice and work on my game a lot too so i'm pretty thankful for that and uh, it's nice being able to spend time with my dad in the summer um so uh yeah it's uh it's been a good summer just doing that and uh on the golf course a lot so it's uh, been nice to work on my golf game a little bit more now that we have the time off so Awesome. All right. Well, nothing in the queue so far, but I will ask one follow-up question. Uh, what are you most excited for this season? Um, like I said, I think that uh, we've gotten better every single year. And uh, I think that will uh, keep, keep going into next year. And I'm just looking forward to seeing what we, we can accomplish as a team this year. So. Awesome, Jackson. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to pop on the call and surprise all of our fans. I'm sure everyone's really excited to have you and can't wait to see what you got hey, on the Sam. Ice. Sam, yep. I just wanted to say, Jackson, good to see you there. You went, you're in a nice, uh, where are you? About Were you in a cottage there? Uh, no, I'm on my parents' uh, back little uh, four-season room back here. It's, uh, it's, like a, nice it's a really nice day out here. So, yeah. Nice spot. I just wanted to say to the, to the fans that have been here, I mean, Jackson, it'll be the fourth year uh, that he's with the beast and and you know it was at the beginning it was a tough battle when Colin was coaching and for Jackson to make the team and battle through that and and he's just he's been one of the most reliable guys we frankly you know ever had in our on our team he scored 17 goals last year he definitely would have got got robbed of not getting 20 uh, for us not finishing the season but you just become a He's always been really reliable uh, as a player, but he's just become a huge, huge part of the team. So anyway, Jax, just want to say it's uh, it's great to have you back. Appreciate it, Kerry. Um, it's awesome to be back, and I'm, I'm looking forward to battling for you guys again. So, Kerry, I think you caught me going off script a little bit, so thanks for pulling me back in. Spiros, do you have any comments on, on your newest signing? Yeah, no, obviously we're – Duncan and I are really excited to welcome Jackson back. Uh, you know, he's been – a do whatever it takes for the team type of guy. Uh, I know long before I even arrived, but he was a big part of me understanding what it means to be at Brampton Beast and what it means to do what it takes to win here in Brampton. Um, you know, we we love Leifer. Uh He does everything we ask of him. He, he kills penalties really well. He plays any forward position up and down the lineup. And uh, you know, we discovered midway through the game, one of the best net front players we had on the power play this past season too. And uh, he really always stepped up to the challenge, never gives us a hard time, and he always takes a real easy approach to things. So uh, he, you know, a lot of times coach, our job in coaching is to make our, our players feel comfortable, but he does a great job of making us feel comfortable too, especially when he's on the ice. So uh, really happy to have Leifer back. He's a big part of our culture. All right, Jackson, before we let you go, um, I think we'll go with the White's question. I don't know who Bill's iPhone is. I think he's trying to throw you through a loop, that guy. But um, the Whites, uh, we've got which of your games has improved the most, golf or hockey? Which one would you say? <laughs> I'm going to say hockey. Just uh, I've been able to be in the rink a lot. Golf is just a, a little bit of a hobby from, for me. So uh, the golf game has improved quite a bit, though. So I'm getting there. <laughs> Awesome. All right, Jackson. Well, thank you again so much for joining us. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Go Beast, go. <laughs> Love it. All right. So we'll go ahead into a, another question. I don't know if Lori Murphy is is on. It's it's her question, and I have it directed towards oh, Gary. Oh, there she is. She's there. Lori yeah. and Tim. Hi. Hi, Lori. How's it going? Oh, great. Thanks for doing this. This is uh, fantastic. Your guys' background is so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Luckily, we had some rain, so the grass is a bit greener. So, <laughs> yeah. So, I thought your question was was well pointed at maybe Carrie and give him an opportunity to kind of speak on the topic. So, I'll let you go ahead and ask the question when whenever you're ready to go. 
Okay. Um, okay, so I'll just read it exactly as I had sent it. So cons thanks, Carrie. Um, considering COVID-19 concerns, will there be outside food permitted or will there be more individually packaged items available at concession? It's a great question. I think we, I think like a lot of things and I think almost everything related to COVID, I feel like my answer is not sure. I think it's still, I think what I would say is safety, health and safety is going to rule the day. So as much as we'd all love getting back to hockey and want to have an environment, I want to have, be able to access concessions and we're, we're what we're kind of doing also is monitoring what places like um, the Toronto Zoo and places that are opening more um, there's drive-ins and how they're handling their concessions a lot of other events in the city that are starting to uh, to look at that so I'd say we don't know yet um, we'd like to have some level of concessions available but if not we would have a more relaxed policy for people bringing their own food in so I think it's a little early but I think I, the only thing I can say is it'll it'll really be about health and safety first does Thank that help you. yes thanks very much Awesome. It's nice to get that update, Carrie. So thanks for, for providing it for everyone. I'm going to remind you guys again that uh, if you guys have any questions for the next player that pops up, and I think it'll be an exciting one for you guys as well, um, just throw them in the chat right away and then we'll try and get to some of them. But uh, without further ado, I'll let our Director of Business Ops, Lauren, she's going to introduce our very next player who I think is trying to throw everyone off in a more suspicious way than Beast Player 2, which was the outline. <laughs> Thanks so much, Sam. Uh, this next player most often plays center, but also plays on the wing. He was a point per game player during the 1920 season. He was part of our leadership group this past season. On his off days, he models merchandise for the team store. And he spelled his name with a K, not a C, and you'll hear about it if you're wrong. <laughs> that being said, I'd like to announce we've also re-signed Eric Bradford to the Brampton Beast. Come on, Bill. <laughs> am, I, am I here now? I, I can hear you. I can't see you. Okay, Let's how see. do I change it? Um, are you on, on the iPad in the bottom left corner? There should be a, a start video. Oh. We might have lost him for a quick second. There right. he is. He's got to turn now his your audio. <laughs> Eric, your audio. <laughs> Oh, oh no. <laughs> Maddie, right. turn your uh, audio on, buddy. Can, I, can, I, can you guys hear me now? Yeah, look like a great speech. You got to start Sorry, from the I'm top. All, I'm, all, I'm all flustered right now. My cousin just scored <laughs> shorthanded for Carolina, so Woo! it was a beauty goal. So um, thank you for the introduction, Lauren. I'm really excited to be back here and hopefully get back to hockey soon. Awesome. All right, so again, we'll throw some questions into the chat to you guys, don't be shy, but I'll start off with the first question. Um, obviously, everyone's heard about the retirement of Jordan Henry and you being part of the leadership group and an assistant captain, Eric. Um, how do you guys look to fill that gap and what does that look like next season for our team? Yeah, I mean, I like to think that our, our team has tons of leaders. So obviously with, with Hank being gone and you know him being such a big aspect to you know, the program we've all built here in Brampton over the last several years and stuff. Um, it, it, it's going to be tough to replace, but, you know, internally, I think with a lot of the guys we have coming back, I think we have a lot of plenty of leadership coming back and a lot of guys that are, you know, willing to pick up the slack and, you know, keep building off of what we've, what we've established here. Awesome. And just while we're waiting for some more chat queue questions, I'll ask one more. Um, obviously, you're well connected with all the guys. You're a veteran player. Uh, can you just touch on, you know, what the overall vibe is amongst all the guys and if they're eager to get back or what that's like? Yeah, no, I, I, I you know, I've been talking to a lot of guys and, you know, trying to get on some other guys that maybe may have not committed to the, the season for next year yet. Um, you know, I think with, you know, certain veteran guys and stuff that have been around, I've kind of been blowing up their phones, telling them not to take <laughs> jobs here and there, try to, you know, selfishly bring them back to us. But, um, you know, I think the overall mood is good. I think guys are, are really excited to get back and, and play. We have a lot of great, great players coming back. Um, obviously with, with me and Brendan Miller being close that, 
you know, we're excited to get another year to play again, play with each other. And we were out skating last night, working on our game and stuff like that. So um, I don't think there's a, there's too many days that go by where Miller and I aren't talking about the team, you know, and, and razzing each other, getting ready to go for next year. So um, I think, you know, the, all the guys and I'm sure all you guys as well, just want to get back to uh, some normalcy here and, and hopefully we do the right things between now and the regular season that allow us to get back and play hockey sooner rather than later. Eric, true or false? I, I might've heard a rumor. Is there some full equipment dressing driving to the uh, arena with you and Miller? You know what? <laughs> we, we, we like to do it all, uh, old school. I guess uh, the Orangeville way we call it, we get dressed in the parking lot. So we just, you know, <laughs> drop our clothes and stuff there and we, we just sit there and we. Oh, we lost Bill. <laughs> You're right. muted again. I don't know there why I keep doing that, but no, we, we just pull our lawn chairs out at Teen Ranch there. It's a rink just outside of Orangeville. Um, and we all just sort of, you know, talk, catch up before we go on the ice. And then actually, like, I, I, I know the one guy who runs all the skill stuff at Teen Ranch. He actually knows uh, backs really well as well. His name's Brett Bossman. So the, on Sunday, he let us go in the dressing rooms and stuff for the first time. So that was kind of cool to get back and in that team setting where, you, you know, everyone's in the dressing room together. Awesome. All right, Carrie, I'll turn it to you for any, any comments. Oh, Spiros, you want to go first? Yeah, obviously, it's uh, anytime you can bring back a really important piece of your leadership group, it's uh, a, a good step in, in the right direction for the following season. Uh, Braddy is a guy that uh, you know, plays with a lot of emotion, and he, he leads his day-to-day -day with a lot of emotion. Sometimes we've had to reel him back on his emotion, but, uh, you know, I've always said that I, as a coach in my position, in my position I'd always love – prefer to reel somebody back than, than to have to push them out. And he's a guy that sacrifices for his team. He had an incredible season last year. Uh, you know, as a lot of people know, he didn't get his first game until second week of November, uh, coming off a pretty critical injury. And, you know, as a coaching staff, we looked at that and said, you know, if we get Braddy back to normal by, by January, February, uh, we're going to be in a good spot going into playoffs. And, um, you know, he, he just he came in with a bang and he he was a point of game guy right away oh shit you're losing me on the internet no you're good keep up keep okay. rolling uh, <laughs> and he he was phenomenal right from the start so where, where we were hoping he'd be at in january february he was um he was great right from the mid november on uh he's a really caring individual he loves the beast he loves his, his teammates uh i think sometimes he loves his coaching staff too and uh, we love coaching him. Um, one other thing, though, is, you know, we had some guys with some really good hair last year. We had Alex Dubow and Matt McLeod. And, and Brady would always get upset when he was left out of the great hair conversation. He's not, <laughs> not having the best hair day today. <laughs> the pandemic has allowed me to grow my hair out. So now I might be jumping him for third place even. Uh, so sorry, Brady, about that. But we're happy to have you back, buddy. <laughs> Gary, do you want to jump yeah, in? Yeah, I just, I just want to say, Eric, uh, it's, you know, it's rare. You get, he's a veteran, right? So you only get four veterans. He's Eric's and has, he's got his hair straightened out. Yeah, he's there got we go. Eric, Eric, Eric's at, at 25 years old. I think the only other guy we ever had that was a veteran that young was David Pecan uh, when he started with us. And I think it just shows to be, I mean, Eric was a star on Toledo. And we used to play against him, and we struggled those three, four years ago against Toledo. And um, he's been a huge part of our team. I think he leads the league, though. The one thing I give Eric credit, so I talk to Spiros pretty regularly since COVID started about who he's talking to. Uh, and, he, you know, he'd say, oh, I haven't spoken to this guy in two weeks, or I haven't spoken to this guy in ten. He said, spoke to Eric again today. Okay. Spoke to Brett. So I don't think there was a day. I don't think I ever talked to Spiros where he didn't say talk to Eric about and and that that's cool because even back in April May I think Eric was talking about getting back on the ice and playing hockey and being part of our team so that's uh that's the character we need he's been great and uh it's excited to have him back excited awesome. To have him back. awesome uh we got we do have a question for you Eric um just what was your favorite team to play against uh 
you want to answer that one. <laughs> Can you guys see me and hear me? Oh, yeah, you're good. Just don't move. <laughs> okay, I fixed the hair there, Coach. Uh, I just got a cut the other day, too, so I, now I'm really self-conscious. Um, yeah, my favorite team to play against, I think, would have to be Toledo. Um, you know, obviously, this year I had a couple of real rough games against them. I think maybe trying to do too much sometimes. I'm, I'm guilty of that, but it, it all comes from a good place. Um, I obviously have some extra motivation playing against them and you know, and going there, especially the atmosphere and they always have good teams. It's always a good challenge for us in, in, in Brampton. And I, you know, I think, I, I think, you know, throughout the organization, we, you know, everyone sort of has a chip on our shoulders like when we play them just because, you know, they sort of carry themselves on a, on a level that they think they're, you know, better than our organization and stuff like that. So I think a lot of people in, in, in players, especially when we play them, we get a little added incentive to, you know, try our best to, to beat them, to show them that we belong in the upper echelon of teams in the, in the league. And we're, uh, you know, we believe that we're a consistent playoff team and that has a chance to win every time we get into the playoffs. So um, it, they would definitely be my freaking favorite team to play against because <laughs> obviously the added incentive and it's, it's, it's just a good challenge. And, you know, when you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. So um, it'd definitely be them. Awesome. Well, thanks Eric so much for popping in and revealing in a dramatic way with Bill's phone. Uh, we'll hopefully see you when the season starts and thank you again. Yeah. Thanks guys. I'm really excited to get back and, you know, get back to playing hockey and stuff like that. I can't say that enough. So thanks for having me on and we'll see you guys soon. Awesome. All right. Well, while we get ready for the next player, we do have another fan question. This one's from Jeff Tasca. And if you don't know, he is one of the talent, one of the very talented minds behind our Jersey remake over renovation and a lot of our uh, theme Jersey, almost, almost all of our theme jerseys. So Jeff, obviously a pleasure to have you on the call. If you want to go ahead and ask your question, I thought it would be really well directed towards Spiros just with it being his first year and fresh uniforms. Sure, I guess you can hear me all right? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Just making sure this is working. Um, thank you very much. Um, yeah, actually, I, I was meaning to kind of ask this in person, but obviously, situation kind of, you know, happened. Uh, but it was just more or less, uh, you know, what did you think of the uniform updates this season? And was it kind of like starting with uh, <clears throat> a fresh team this year, like being your first year in Brampton, but also the first year with, I guess, a new look? And just seeing what you thought of it. Yeah, I, I really loved our, our uniforms. I thought they were one of the best in the league. And, and I'm not just saying that because I coach the team. I, I've coached teams where I thought our uniforms were brutal, and I was pretty <laughs> honest about it. Um, and I think our front office knows if I don't like something, I let them know probably too many times. So uh, I, I loved our uniforms. And I know our players really did too. Um, the design. It, you could tell it was unique and it was our own, but at the same time, you could see the connection to our affiliates uh, with our color scheme, uh, which was really cool. Um, you know, they were they're really sleek, and, and the guys like the you know the claw marks and the circular logo, but then having the black jersey with the uh, the the you know original logo on it too gave it a nice variety for our guys. And you know, hockey players get pretty superstitious; they liked certain or at, at different times and others, we'd be on a winning streak and then Stixie would switch our color and, and they'd all blame the loss on him. Uh, you know, but we, we really did. We loved our uniforms. We loved our specialty uniforms. We thought, you know, I've seen a lot of Star Wars uniforms. We thought our Star Wars one was the best in the league. Obviously the Canada Day one is, is you know, it gets a lot of attention across the country. Uh, so we do a fantastic job there and we love wearing them and, and showing them off. But uh, you know, it was really exciting for me to be part of a new team. And the first time I even laid eyes on the uniform was at actually the press conference announcing me. Uh, they gave Duncan and I uh, the old jerseys with our names on the back, and then Kerry just busted out the red one. And the <laughs> question I the asked first him, one. Yeah. was first one. We, 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 we had to sneak one. It was the very first one, I think. Sam had yeah. the <laughs> It was like a prototype. I had to like run from one end of the arena to the pro shop. Yeah, I think it might, that one might have <laughs> fallen apart after the press conference, but it was. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, uh, I had the old one in my hands and not that I didn't like it, but the first question I asked is when do I get one of those? So uh, we, we really loved them. They were great. So great job on your part in it too. Thank you.
<laughs> oh, thank you. And it's been great watching you guys in them this year. So it's been good. My little guys loved you guys. Awesome. Jeff, it's always a pleasure working with you. You're so creative and it's just been such a good time this year. So I'm really happy you're on the call. I, got, I know you have another question moving on, so I'll move along to that. Um, but before we get there, um, we have a, a new player, a new face on our team this year that we're hoping will bring presence that's similar to, to Hank. And I know that Carrie and Spiros will really, really talk on this and touch on that. But before we get to there, Anthony, our play-by-play -play and PR, you guys know Anthony, or I'm sure you've heard him at the very least. Uh, he's going to tee this one up for you guys, see if you guys can take a few guesses. All right. Thank you very much, Sam. So... I had the pleasure of meeting this player for the first time yesterday on a call just like this. Uh, this defenseman is a former London Knight and a two-time OHL champion. He's played in 237 American Hockey League games with the Hartford Wolfpack and the Hershey Bears. He's an experienced blue liner who's going to bring leadership, defensive presence, and grit to the Beast back end. So all that being said, I'm very excited to announce that the Beast have signed veteran defenseman Tommy Hughes for the upcoming season. Hey, yeah, thanks for having me on. Welcome, Tommy. Me? It, yeah, it was really exciting for you to sign with the team. What were your initial thoughts? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, I'd, I've heard a lot of good things about the organization and uh, Coach Spiro. So, it's, you know, it kind of went quickly, the whole signing process, but um, it was it went smoothly. So I'm excited to be a, be a part of the team. Obviously, you're a brand new face to the organization. So for some of our most important fans who are on the call who, you know, signed up with us right away and have supported us throughout this whole uh, pandemic, uh, why don't you let them know three things that they should know and look out for, for you? Um, well, hockey-wise, I'd say more of a defensive, uh, defensive player, defensive D-men. So, um, you know, I might not put up too many points, but hopefully – uh, keep the puck out of our own net. That's kind of my my thing out there. Um, this will be my eighth year pro, and being from London, uh, just down the road, it's pretty exciting to be close to home and close to so many friends and family that hopefully will come out to a lot of games. And um, you know, I haven't really experienced that uh, in my career, so that'll be a good change. And then um, I guess one the third one. Um, I took the firefighting course through our Players Association, so hopefully I can kind of move into that uh, when I decide to hang up my skates and move on from hockey, so that's kind of exciting too. So when the play is really fire and it's lit out there, you can put it out? <laughs> it's a super yeah, dumb joke. A, Sorry, guys. Yeah. I had to. <laughs> um, all right, Carrie, why don't you go ahead or Spiros, whoever wants to start, you guys can, can comment there. Spiros, you want to start? Sure, yeah. Anytime you can add a, a veteran defenseman um, with the experience that Tommy has, it's really exciting. Obviously, there was a huge void to fill with the announcement of uh, Hank's retirement. Um, you know, truth be told, there's, you're never going to replace a Jordan Henry, uh, but adding somebody like Tommy Hughes can really bolster your lineup and uh, you know, give you a lot of great options on the back end and bring some leadership and physicality and, and great defensive play. Uh, Tommy's played you know, four full seasons in the American League. He's been played in parts of six of the last seven seasons. Uh, his two experiences in the ECHL, both of the South Carolina uh, Stingrays, uh, he was part of the best or one of the best teams in the league with defensive numbers. Um, Unfortunately for me, when I coached the South Carolina Stingrays, Tommy decided to take a sabbatical to the UK, uh, but he had a really good year in the UK there as well. Uh, so he's just a great defenseman that's going to bring a lot to the table. And the reviews from former coaches, teammates, even opponents um, about how a respectful player he is, how hard of a player he is to play against, were through the roof. So we're really happy to have him on our side and uh, to have his presence with us. Yeah, I, I just want to add this the first time Tommy and I are talking because th this one moved real quick. Like normally, yeah. Spiros talk to me, and these are a long process, especially with a veteran defenseman. And, and I would say, you know, I've been the GM of the Beast for the seven years. There's no more important spot to fill on a team than a veteran defenseman. So, yeah, as Spiros said, with Jordan leaving and 
uh, veterans in themselves, it's hard, but to have somebody with the AHL experience and more importantly, the character, like, you know, for us, it's about just having people that have great reputation and um, everything from Hartford to London to South Carolina is that, that Tommy will be a really uh, good person and, and a really key key part of our team so just want to welcome them and say you know we're really excited it's a piece that um if you want to get far in this league you need to have a really strong uh back line and uh you know without that it's tough so so um really excited to have tommy in the floor thanks gary all right so we got a question for you tommy from the whites um and it's about beast alumni too so did you enjoy playing with uh, jeff brown in england um yeah, he was actually, he was the same team, but he played the year before, so we never actually crossed paths. I've heard i heard a lot of good things about him, but yeah, we never played together. So. All right, Tommy, well, it was a pleasure to have you on the call. Thanks for coming on and, and doing the dramatic reveal for us, and I'm sure I speak for everyone when I say that we're really excited to have you on the team. Yeah, thanks for having me, and just uh, looking forward to starting the year and hopefully have a, a great team, so thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Tommy. All right, so we have one more fan question. Jeff, I believe you're up again. And I thought that this one was uh, was a pretty good question to ask. So if you want to go ahead and, and kick it off, we'll, we'll give you an answer. Oh, OK. Uh, well, my, my uh, other question here is just going to be, are you going to be doing any more of these uh, live virtual events in the future? Yeah, so I'll start and then I'll, I'll kind of toss things over to Carrie because um, we both were talking about this question the other day. And I think honestly, it depends on your guys' feedback. Obviously, we're a little biased and I think that the, the event is going really well and it's, it's a lot of fun to do this face to face than behind some graphics on our social media. So I really appreciate everyone coming out. And if you have any feedback for us, please reach out to your reps, reach out to your contacts or myself. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys and just know what we can work on and what you guys liked or what disliked about this event. Um, but yeah, it seems smooth. So I'd like to run some more, but I think that depends on Carrie and your thoughts. So I'll throw that your way. Yeah, no, I think it's great. You guys were the thanks for being the guinea pigs because this was this was the first ever one of these for the beast. So, uh, but I think it went really well. I think the idea would be to get more fans uh, you know, we do some town halls and stuff and, but I think, and I think having the players on there that you guys can, uh, really talk to them and ask some questions is pretty cool. So, I mean, I'm, I'm all in for doing more of these. It seems like it went pretty good to me. Spiros, I think there's one question for you before we head off. It's from Jim Anastas and he wants to know if the Beast are <laughs> holding tryout camp this year because his men's hockey league is holding out for some ice time. <laughs> oh yeah well Jim Manassas has been playing a long time uh and he currently is the only active player in the Anastas family uh my brother and I <laughs> long since retired uh but uh yeah that the open tryout's still up in the air we are we are taking inquiries though so we'll write your name down uh but uh I think there's, still, work there, on there's your... still there's still a veteran spot left right it's yeah <laughs> yeah still got one spot yeah, so, but he's got to work on his back checking. I played on his line a few times and it's, it's, it's atrocious. <laughs> he's awesome. a goal scorer. <laughs> um, so just to answer you, Robert, uh, on an app, we don't have an app currently right now, but it's something that we definitely have looked into and we'll keep you posted and up to date on that. Um, but I know that we've talked a little bit, Carrie, about doing a virtual town hall in the future. Yep. Um, so that's something just to keep an eye out for. We'll definitely let everyone know. Yeah, I, I think we'll do something, guys, on the whole. And, and I wanted this to be about hockey, but I think on COVID and social distancing and how all, I think everyone's wondering. So I think once we have more clarity, like the question that Lori asked about concessions, I think we could do a full town hall on, you know, all of the things related to what coming to a Beast game will look like in the new season. So, but um, when we have some more answers. Awesome. All right. Well, we want to thank everyone for supporting the team, obviously, and getting behind us. Um, we know it's been a difficult time and we hope that everyone really is, is staying safe and healthy and social distancing and wearing a mask like Mark. Um, we are really excited to see you guys all back in the rink. So just a quick reminder, if you post anything on your stories, uh, make sure to tag us. We'll be reposting that today um, and have a safe and wonderful afternoon, guys. Thank you again. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Have a good day.